So now we're gonna use the idea of inequalities with this business application. So we want to know the break-even point. So basically the break-even point is when we start making money. So we've started a new business, we have a whole bunch of cost, we have to get a space, we have to maybe buy machines, material. So we're not making money at the beginning. So we need to know at what point do we start making money? And that's the break-even point. You completely break even, you've neither lost nor made money when the revenue equals the cost. The amount of money that you've brought in, that's the revenue, equals how much money you spent, that's the cost. So what we want to do is to find a profit. So that means we want to have more money coming in than we're spending. So we're going to set up an, inter, um, an inequality. So we're going to have the revenue be greater than or equal to the cost. And we are going to have to think back to the chapter one stuff a little bit where we talk about revenue and cost for some of these examples. But let's start with one where I give you the cost and the revenue. So my revenue here is 65x, so I want 65x to be greater than or equal to 50x plus 4,000. I'm gonna solve for x. Do not move that 65x. It is already by itself. If you move it, you're gonna get yourself in a world of hurt. Instead, move the 50x to be with it. that greater than and equal to sign look a little bit better. I'm going to divide by 15. And my calculator is going to give me a decimal that has a whole bunch of sixes and then a seven. We do want to round. So I'm going to go up to 267. Because at 266, I wouldn't have actually broke it even. I need to do. Um, I need to sell more than 266. So I need to sell 267. I'm going to write this as interval notation. So it has the equal to. So I'm going to have a bracket 267 to infinity. What this means is it going back to these directions here. It wanted to find the value that we would break even or make a profit. So it would be from the 267 own upward to we could sell infinity of these things but we had to sell at least 267 units to break even all right let's look at another one of these so we're still going to find this break even but this time I didn't give you the cost and revenue. So we need to go back and remember our chapter one material. So the cost is equal to the fixed cost plus the variable cost. And so I've given you those, but we have to write you, you and I together have to write this equation. And we also are gonna have to write the revenue as well. So a popcorn manufacturer can sell its bag of popcorn to a wholesaler for 45 cents a bag. So that's what I'm selling it at. That's my revenue. I'll try to color code it. So this is going to be my revenue. So my revenue is going to be um, 0.45 a bag. I'm going to call it X. Remember, it's going to be the cost um, times the items that I'm selling. So I'm selling bags of popcorn. That's my revenue. And I was doing cost in red. The cost of producing is 25 cents per bag and a fixed cost of 80,000. So my cost is going to be that fixed cost plus the 0 0.25 and a bag. Remember, a bag is X. The bag was right there. I put an X and my bag right there means X. So X is the number of bags I'm selling. For it to be break even, I need the revenue to be greater than or equal to the cost. So I'm going to set these equations into that inequality. Just like before, don't move that 0.45 because then you won't have a side of the equation left and that'll get you in trouble. So I'm going to do the 0.20. I'm going to divide by 0.20. So 
So X is the 400,000 bags of popcorn. 400,000 would have me break even. I would be making, I would be making as much money as I'm getting out. So I would need to sell at least 400,000 bags of popcorn. 400,000 would mean I'm even. If I sell more than that, I'll make a profit. So that's the break even. And as an inequality, I would write that as a bracket because it has the equal to to infinity. Let me take out that comma so we don't have as many of them. Sometimes that can get confusing. So my inequality for this one will look like that. All right, one more example. This one's a little bit different. It's actually easier to solve, um, but maybe you have to think about a little bit to set up. So a golf course charges $65 for, for a round of golf using their set of clubs, but only $50 if you have your own clubs. So it's cheaper if you have your own clubs. You can go out and buy clubs that you found for $270. We need to see, is that a good idea? How many rounds of golf would it take to spend $270? So you would save, if you had your own clubs, oops, you would save $15 per round. Because instead of charging $65, they're only going to charge you $50. So every round of golf you play, you save $15. Just like every bag up there was X, this time X is going to be every round of golf I play. I would need to make sure that I saved at least $270. So I'm going to make that greater than or equal to $270. If it could be more, that's great. But I would need to make at least $270. Um, dollars to make it worth buying my own clubs. If not, if I was only going to play once, I should just rent. But if I'm going to play golf a whole bunch, then I should buy my clubs. So solving for this is really easy. You just got to divide by 15. This is the setup that's a little bit more challenging. So if I play golf 18 times, I would save $270. If I played 19 times, I would save even more money so it would totally be worth it. But in order to buy the clubs, I would pretty much have to tell myself, you've got to play golf 18 times, or you might as well just rent them and save yourself some money. So this would be to break even. So let's see. You would need to play 18 rounds of golf to break even. Any more than that, and you'd be getting a profit. Writing as an inequality, I'm going to use that bracket again because all of these have the equal to on it over to infinity. And you've probably seen by now there's kind of a pattern to these when we're writing them as the um, interval notation. We've got that bracket on the left-hand side and a parenthesis, um, parenthesis with a, um, an infinity on the right-hand side.